Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Everyday Homeschooler, where we chat about education, homemaking, and everyday life. You might wanna grab a cup of coffee, uh, some chocolate. Today we're going to talk about end of year homeschool curriculum wrap up uh, for what we did with my fifth and sixth grader for the 2019-2020 school year. So for those of you who may be new around here, my name is Sarah and I have five children. They are ages 12, 11, 7, 2, and then I have a new baby eight months old. This year was our eighth year homeschooling and I have done school with a sixth, a fifth grader, and a kindergartner. So it's June here and this is the time of year where I know a lot of homeschoolers like me are starting to think through what worked and what didn't work this year for school and what changes do I wanna make for next school year. So today I thought I would just share with you um, each of the curriculums that I picked and chose for my children this year and tell you all the nitty gritty what worked, what didn't, what kind of felt in between. Now, just a little bit of a disclaimer here. First of all, not being sponsored, not being paid. These are all just my own genuine opinions about each of these curriculums. Second of all, if I say a curriculum didn't work very well for us, that doesn't mean that I don't like the curriculum or I hate the curriculum. Obviously, I liked it at some point or another because I purchased it. Um, a lot of times I think this is just user error. I think maybe I did not use the curriculum the way it was intended or just because of life circumstances or the season that we are in, we weren't able to use the curriculum the way that I thought we would or the way it was designed. If a curriculum didn't work for me, doesn't mean it won't work for you. I hope it does. Okay, so let's start with math. A lot of you already know, I am a Matthew C. fan, a Matthew C. junkie. This year, my fifth grader did Epsilon and my sixth grader did Zeta. Epsilon deals mostly with fractions and Zeta does decimals and percents. If I'm completely honest with you, doing long division and fractions about did me in the last couple of years with schooling. Uh, there were many tears cried on my part, on my children's part. When we start getting into some of these more difficult math things, it, it, it's, it's a tough road, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Doing math can be a little bit of a struggle. But that being said, I love Matthew Stee. My kids adore Steve Demi. They think he is a celebrity. He is a rock star in their book. They love watching the DVDs each week where they get to learn about the lesson. So if you're not if you're not familiar with Matthew C, um, each week my kids watch a DVD where Steve Demi, the creator, gets on and teaches them the lesson for the week and I, I watch alongside them and learn with them. And then the two of us will sit down and work out anything that they're not quite understanding. I will give them some examples of some problems and sometimes we'll even just work through the first worksheet of the week together. Then there are between five and six worksheets that they will continue to work on their own. Every day my kids normally do about one math worksheet. And then at the end of the week, there is a test workbook that you can use. Now, for Matthew C, what I have done up until this point, and I think I'm going to change this this year, is we have not used the test book throughout the year. I save the test book for when we take a summer break or longer breaks. And I let my kids use that in lieu of doing math through the summer. And it's just kind of a nice built-in review. They go through the test book and redo the tests and watch any videos that they need to use. So that's where my kids currently are. They have both completed these levels and are now doing their test books as review work for the summer. Um, I think next year when we're moving more into junior high age, we're gonna start doing the tests every single week as the curriculum intends. Um, one of my favorite things about Matthew C are the manipulatives. In the younger years, they are using all of the math blocks and actually when they do fractions and decimals, there are new manipulative sets that go along with these. There are fraction overlays and some decimal, um, just little block kind of things. And they are really helpful, especially if you have a visual learner. Matthew C as it 
as it says, is it's math you see that you can visualize and understand. We, we love math you see. We will continue to use math you see for years and years to come. This worked great in our homeschool this year. Okay, let's talk all things language arts. I have quite the stack here. First and foremost, we have used IEW. This is just the teaching writing structure and style um, that goes along with all of the IEW programs. This year, both of my kids did the Continuation A course. Um, it was a DVD course and they, they did a lot of it independently in the afternoons without me. I love IEW. It is actually the way I wish I would have learned how to write when I was in school. We didn't complete the entire program this year. We, we did a lot. Um, I would say we're about 60, 70% of the way through. Um, we just, having a baby this year, having a toddler, it, you know, it was just one of those subjects we didn't always get to consistently. However, if you are looking for a very thorough and robust writing program, IEW is the way to go. So I would just encourage you to head over to their website, look at their different programs. Um, it's something we will continue to do um, or at least supplement with in our, in our homeschool for years to come. All right, this is another product from IEW. This is the Fix It Grammar series. Um, this is something we started last year. Last year we did level one, and this year my kids moved into level two, Robin Hood. Um, we started out strong in this book. If you are not familiar with Fix It Grammar, again, I would encourage you to head over to IEW's website. But the premise behind it is, is that essentially your child is reading one sentence every day and from a story for this year, it is Robin Hood. Other years, there's the nose tree or the little mermaid, but um, a good classic piece of literature, they are reading and writing it out one sentence at a time, one sentence per day. And then they are going through and marking the grammar that they are learning in that sentence. So for instance, in the first weeks, maybe they are going through and marking all of the nouns and all of the verbs in the sentence. By the end of the year, they are having to mark different clauses, prepositions, all, all types of things in grammar. And they are also, there's an, um, a piece of copy work with this as well, where they are then copying the sentence each day so that at the end of the year, they have copied the, the entire piece of literature. I definitely really love this style of grammar teaching for my kids. It, it's a very much a gentle approach. And if your kids like IEW or are familiar with Andrew Poodwall, this, this is just a really hand in hand activity to go along with it. Part of this curriculum that we just personally didn't do was the copy work. We do copy work in a lot of other areas of our homeschool and my kids just, they get a little bit tired of doing all the copy work. So that was one part of the program we did skip. But they did go through and do the daily sentences and marking up of all of the grammar. I would say that this is a really good challenging program. There are parts of grammar in this book that, that I don't remember learning even in high school. It's, it's a really great um, program. I would definitely tell you to look into it more if you're looking for a grammar solution for your upper elementary middle school kids. Okay, so spelling you see, you guys know I did a, a video review of Level D Americana just a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it below. Go check it out. I love spelling you see. This program is fabulous. Um, it is something that we have just been kind of plugging away at slowly. I'm really focusing in on spelling mastery with my kids. And so I'm trying not to push them too quick to, you know, along through the books. So we are in level D for fifth and sixth grade. And I think that that's totally appropriate. Again, it was a lot of history passages, which were really fun. And I just love all of the chunking. And you guys just, just go watch my video about spelling you see level D. Okay, and so then that leads us to reading and literature. I am going to do a video about how we handle literature in our household, but I'll just give you a little bit of a introduction plug right now. We do what is called, what we've deemed literature logs in our house, 
where my kids will independently read a book right now for my fifth and sixth graders that those are chapter books um, they will read uh, a passage or so many pages or so many chapters in that book every single day and then they will do some writing about it and some illustrations about it and so that's how we did literature this year and it just it works so well it doesn't cost very much um, just whatever book you're reading and some paper and art supplies and so we will definitely continue to do that this next year i went ahead and asked noah and leah what their favorite books that they read independently were the green ember series if you are not familiar with sd smith and this series oh my gosh it, it is so so good there's also audio books that they are just so well done all of my kids have actually listened to a good portion of this on an audio book but noah has read these independently and these were his favorite books that he read this year leah for the last oh almost going on a year now has been working her way through the little house series she she just loves Laura Ingalls um, and Mary she just loves these stories and just pours into these for hours and hours so this was her favorite literature this year while we're on the topic of reading I I do a good bit of reading aloud in our house or at least I try to we also listen to a ton of audiobooks and honestly this is all because of Sarah McKenzie. You guys know her. I'm sure you love her as much as I do. If you've not heard of Sarah McKenzie and the Read Aloud Revival, I would encourage you to go check her out. We try to do a good bit of reading aloud every single day and listen to audiobooks, especially at meal and bedtimes. I asked the kids what their favorite read aloud was from the year, and both of them said The Sign of the Beaver. They really enjoyed this book. It went along with some things we were studying in history, and if your kids like the Little House series, this, this would be right up their alley. So while we're talking language arts, I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into Bible. We don't necessarily consider Bible part of our homeschool. It is not something that I'm necessarily requiring my kids to study every single day. But in our home, we definitely encourage our children to read their Bible and study their Bibles. Um, something I purchased for both of my kids this year, my 11 and 12 year olds, um, was this book called Exploring the Bible, a Bible Reading Plan for Kids, and it's by David Murray. And this is, this is such a good book. Um, it is very simple. It just goes through and gives your children chronologically, starting at the beginning of the Bible, working its way through um, a passage for them to read every single day. And it gives them just one question about the verses that they're reading. And they just kind of journal as they go and answer the questions and read along. I love the idea that this is instilling in them the daily habit of digging into scripture and thinking about it. It also provides um, snapshot verses, verses that they could work on memorizing if they wanted to, and also encourages them to come up with some prayer points that they can be praying about each week. I just, I, we have really enjoyed these workbooks. We're um, gonna do another one in the, by the same author, I think next year. So if you have, you know, upper elementary, middle school kids, check this out. Okay, so let's talk science and history. First of all, for science, my kids did this, BJU Press Science, grade six. Both my fifth and sixth grade kids did this together. A lot of times I try, I'm sure if you guys have any kids that are close in age, anywhere that you can put them together on the same subject, save yourself a little bit of time, I definitely encourage you to do that. So my fifth grader, she enjoys science, so doing the sixth grade science was not going to be too tough or difficult for her to handle. I went ahead just because last year when I was curriculum shopping, I was pregnant, about to have baby number five. I was trying to think of anything that I could farm out or make just a little bit easier or less on my plate. So I went ahead and I not only purchased the textbook and the student workbook, but I also purchase the online classes. And if you're familiar with BJU Press, you know that they offer, it's, it's several hundred dollars per class, um, but it's the idea where your kids can basically do somewhat of like a distance learning. They log on to the computer every day, a teacher gets on and teaches them the lesson every day, assigns them pages to read in their textbook, workbook pages to do along with it, even gives them um, demos and prompts to do science experiments. I thought it was gonna be a really great fit for our family. 
sadly it wasn't. Within the first few weeks, my kids just weren't really enjoying it. It was really difficult to kind of force them to get on the computer every day to do their science lessons. Something that was supposed to be easy and take work off of my plate was actually making things much more complicated. Now again, I think maybe that's just my kids. I don't think my kids love the idea of just doing school on the computer. They are much more interactive. They like to, you know, sit at the table together and do the work as a family. So it just, it wasn't a very good fit for, for my kids. I, I could see it definitely working for other people. But what I will say is I do definitely love the textbook. We enjoyed reading a lot of the lessons in here. Um, it is just very beautiful. It's a very traditional school-based kind of uh, curriculum. The pictures are really great. The information is very thorough and detailed. It does come at science from a Christian perspective, from a creationist uh, perspective. So just, just so you have that, so you're aware of that. And also the experiments that went along with it were pretty simple and easy to do. I had a lot of the materials already on hand at home. Sadly, this just did not work the way I wanted it to. The online class was a bust. And I hate wasting money that way. But sometimes you just learn, especially with your older kids, by trial and error. For history, we did actually, this was year two we have worked on this curriculum, America the Beautiful by Knotgrass. You can see how big this text is. This is actually part one. There's actually two books to this. Both are this size. It's a very traditional homeschool curriculum where your child is just reading, answering questions, and doing other things along with it. There are great pictures in here. The information is fabulous. At the end of each day, it gives your child some additional activities and assignments. We didn't do all of these. We kind of picked and chose, um, but I did go ahead and purchase to go along with this, with these two books. We did the student workbook which gives your child review questions and activities to go along with each lesson. Crossword puzzles, word searches, you know, those kind of things. There is also a timeline book and a maps book. So they can go through and this is their geography and then also it's really helpful to kind of see where they are in the timeline of what they're studying. As you can tell, this is a, this is a pretty beefy, beefy curriculum and I loved it, I, I definitely did. But this kind of gets to my point of why we kind of dropped science and history by about midway through the year. And this is where I'm gonna talk about Gather Round. We ended up dropping a good bit of our curriculum and switching to Gather Round right after Christmas. I, as mama, was just getting really tired of, you, you know, you can tell I'm a pretty eclectic homeschooler and like different curriculums for different subjects. But that was just getting really wearisome. Um, I was just felt like I was from dawn till dusk running from one child to the next one subject to the next and having to check all those boxes every day I just I couldn't do it anymore especially with a toddler and a baby in the house so we decided to simplify midway through the year and we switched to gather round if you if you're not familiar with gather round I would definitely tell you to check out some of my other videos about gather round homeschool and head to their website but essentially, they are a unit study based curriculum that covers all of your subjects, all of your subjects except for math right now. And so I was able to get rid of some of these individual subjects for each of my kids and just do gather round instead. It was a much simpler approach and it gave me a lot more time as mama. Um, we did Space Asia and we're actually finishing up Human Body right now and especially the science and history portion of those units have just been so challenging and so encouraging and so fun for my kids. I just can't say enough about Gather Round. We will definitely continue to use it. I think we're gonna do oceans towards the end of the summer. Um, so we just, we love Gather Round and it was such a great, unit studies in general were just such a great solution for our family this year. So as much as I love Not Grass, as much as I loved BJU Press, they had to go. Okay guys, well I think that wraps things up for today. Thanks for hanging in there. I know this is a little bit of a long one. I personally, I love these videos. I love seeing how other homeschoolers select their curriculum, what they love and don't love about each one. I find it really helpful. Um, so I hope this was encouraging for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and like it below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I make new videos each week about education, homemaking, and everyday life. See you later.